We saw in episode 78 that Harold Aspton, in his research in electrical engineering, needed real physics to explain his observations. He realised that relativity was wrong and useless to him, so he wrote physics books dealing with reality. In episode 80, we saw another engineer who was not convinced by the current paradigm. Eric Laithwaite had studied physics before he turned to engineering. He was ridiculed, rubbished and ostracised for suggesting that there may be experiments which throw some doubt on some sacred cows of physics. There's actually a very close link between physics and engineering. Physics and engineers often use the same textbooks for their studies. In the days of real science, before the secular establishment took control, it was not unusual for scientists to apply their scientific findings and become engineers. William Thomson, better known as Lord Kelvin, did fundamental physics research in many fields. He became fairly rich and very famous as an engineer for undersea communication cables in countries across the world. His experiments with the real world led him to a depth of understanding about how the Creator's creation works. He put that understanding to good use when dealing with the real world problems. The main difference between science and engineering is that science is interested in discovering the laws that govern nature. Engineers are interested in applying the laws that govern nature. Einstein's first qualification at ETH Zurich was a diploma in civil engineering. He's often recognised as one of the greatest scientists of his time, so he was well qualified to say, Scientists investigate that which already is. Engineers create that which has never been. Most of natural science, physics, chemistry, geology, biology, astronomy, are now tightly in the grip of the scientific establishment. Its grip seems to be a bit looser for engineers and technologists. We were able to glimpse an example of the establishment's stranglehold on science in the channel chat recently. I consider it very fortunate and a great blessing for everyone engaged in the chat that William Walker joined in the discussions a short while ago. He did a PhD at ETH Zurich, where Einstein gained some of his qualifications. Dr Walker kindly gave a link in the chat to his PhD thesis. I haven't read all of it yet, but enough to see that it's not a mathematical goose chase, but real science which follows the scientific method. There are observations and measurements of real experiments, probing the behaviour of the real world. Enough precise measurements to suggest very strongly, among other things, that Maxwell's equations do not always work as generally assumed and also that Einstein's relativity is an optical illusion. Dr Walker's work shows that Einstein's special and general theories are invalid. As soon as I learned this, I asked what success he'd had in publishing his papers. As I expected, the journals had utterly rejected them. They'd not even sent them for peer review. He's published them on internet pre-publication archives where others can, and do, access them. He's posted links to some of his papers in the channel chat. So we again see the rulers of the secular scientific establishment denying publication to anything challenging their best-in-the-field stories. And you might ask why the editors didn't even send them for review. Well, editors of scientific journals have become very afraid because of the Richard Sternberg incident. 
Sternberg was the editor of the Smithsonian Institute journal Proceedings of the Biological Society of Washington. He received a paper titled The Origin of Biological Information and the Higher Taxonomic Categories. He then did what he and editors like him usually did. He sent copies to three reviewers. The reviewers sent them back with approval to publish. The paper included a review of evidence for intelligent design. When the journal came out, the establishment were furious. They've defined science as that which is published in their journals. They had decreed that no paper supporting intelligent design may be published in any of their journals. That way, intelligent design could never be classed as science and would therefore always remain unpublishable in the scientific literature. Sternberg allowed a paper to be published on this banned topic. He was disgraced, humiliated and thrown out. So editors have learned that it is they, not the reviewers, who risk being crushed by the establishment's wrath. So now editors dismiss articles containing anything on the disprove list as soon as they land on their desk. Criticism of Einstein is close to the top of their banned list. So it's no surprise that Dr. Walker was not allowed publication of his papers. But, having spent a great deal of time observing and measuring the way the creation actually works, he could hardly fail to gain an appreciation of the workings of the real world. So, over the last couple of decades, he's been dealing with several aspects of reality and become involved in engineering. As far as I can see, he's proving himself to be an excellent engineer. He's head of a project called Sky Chaser. After watching a video he made about it, I think you'll agree that he fits Einstein's definition of an engineer. Hello, my name is Dr. William Walker. I'm the CEO and inventor of the Sky Chaser flying car. The Sky Chaser is a new type of personal transportation vehicle that is different from other flying cars being developed today or in the past. It is the first true flying car. The Sky Chaser looks and drives like a car and flies using its body as a wing. It can fly both vertically like a drone and horizontally like an airplane. In addition, it is amphibious, so it can navigate as well as take off and land on water. It is fully electric and eventually hydrogen powered, so it's green for the environment. The vehicle will be both manual and autonomous using onboard machine learning AI, sensors, and GPS. Currently, the vehicle uses batteries to power the vehicle, but the goal is to replace the batteries with hydrogen-powered fuel cells, which will give the vehicle hours of range. Six years ago, I started this project in San Diego, California, where the traffic situation is very bad. But I knew there had to be a better way, or eventually the cities are going to fail. So I investigated the status of flying car technology and was surprised to see that there were only a few companies developing them. But they seemed to look and function in a very old-fashioned way. Although several designs such as Terrafugia and Aeromobile worked both as a car and airplane, they typically had large unfolding wings which required them to be driven to and from an airport. Also, they did not fly vertically which would make them much more versatile, convenient, and safer. I also saw that there was a convergence of new technologies that was finally making something even better possible. These technologies included composite materials, such as carbon fiber, more powerful electric motors and batteries, microelectronics, machine learning AI, engineering simulators, VTOL aerodynamics, 3D printing, and CNC machining. After many years of testing a variety of 1-6 scale designs, I developed the Sky Chaser vehicle concept, and it flew and performed great. It not only flew horizontally like an airplane and vertically like a drone, 
but it looked and functioned like a car and was even amphibious. A year and a half ago, I came to Fugus of Sweden to develop a 200-pound full-scale unmanned prototype of this vehicle with my business partner, Dr. Dog Stranaby. The vehicle is now almost completed, and we have begun testing it. On January 10th of this year, the vehicle hovered for the first time. Shortly after, we fine-tuned the flight controller, and the vehicle now flies very well. Thank you for the opportunity to share this new revolutionary vehicle with you that is sure to change transportation as we know it. The current situation in science reminds me of what Fred Hoyle said about it half a century ago. He said physics is in a crisis. He pointed out that few of the best, the cream, the most intelligent university entrants are choosing physics. And for many years, the top intellects most definitely had been choosing physics. I'm not surprised by what Hoyle said. He was writing quite a few years after the scientific establishment had taken control of science. With the scientific method rejected and the best in the field story established in its place, inquiring minds eager to discover new truths about the creation, were thwarted. They had to become locked into the existing paradigm or go somewhere else. And remember what the philosopher of science, Richard Milton, said in episode 80. All the significant discoveries for many years have come from outsiders. Renegades like Eric Laithwaite looking outside the paradigm and paying the price of rejection, ridicule, and ostracism. And this is entirely due to the establishment abandoning the scientific method, the method designed to find out the truth about the Creator's creation. It had to be abandoned to prevent evolution and their other godless theories being thrown out when the evidence showed they were not true. The establishment even had to admit that they're not looking for truth, but only for useful theories. So much of the research being done today has little or no chance of finding anything worthwhile, and certainly not much chance of attracting the best brains. The Creator's creation continues to behave as he created it to behave. And the scientific method remains the best way to find out the truth about it. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances. The secular establishment will carry on trying to find creator-free answers to the origin of life and the universe, because they hate God and his word with a passion. But their hatred of God's word and his creation will not get them very far. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, Please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.